Did you know that there were Byzantine soldiers that converted to Islam, switched sides, and then helped the Muslims defeat the Roman Empire? You see, after the death of Prophet Muhammad in 632, the Muslims began a rapid expansion, swallowing the old territories of the Byzantine Empire. And within a hundred years, they controlled all of the Levant and Egypt and North Africa, and even most of Spain and Portugal, all the lands that the Byzantines used to control. And because the Byzantine Empire had been a naval power centered in the Mediterranean, when the Muslims captured these lands, they gained access to the naval resources and expertise that the Byzantines left behind. And soon enough, the Muslims began developing their own navies. They used the naval infrastructure and shipbuilding resources from the Levant in Egypt, and they employed experienced sailors from these regions, many of whom had converted to Islam. And one of the first places they used their new navy was in Cyprus. In 649, the Muslims began raiding the island, and within a year, they managed to capture it and install a military base there with 12,000 men. It was the first successful venture with their new navy, and the Muslims were beginning to gain confidence. Over the next 200 years, they continued raiding enemy islands throughout the Mediterranean, sometimes gaining and sometimes losing control in a never-ending game of tug-of-war with the Byzantine Empire. They fought over Sardinia and Corsica, Crete, Sicily, Malta, among others. But in the 800s, the Muslims had gained enough experience in both naval warfare and diplomacy to have some decisive victories. The Muslims established the Emirate of Crete in 820 and the Emirate of Sicily in 831. In 840 and 847, Muslims captured the Italian cities of Taranto and Bari respectively, creating a short-lived emirate in southern Italy. By 870, the country of Malta was under Muslim control, and finally in 887, a group of only a hundred Muslims managed to capture a military base along the southern coast of France and establish Muslim control in the surrounding lands. By now, the Muslims were in control of the west, the south, and the east coast of the Mediterranean, and they were now beginning to squeeze the Byzantine Empire and push it out of the north. And it was in this environment that three of Byzantium's greatest sailors would convert to Islam, join the Muslims, and continue the fight against the Byzantine Empire. The first was Photios, a Byzantine renegade who had converted to Islam and switched sides. He was a fierce warrior and the Byzantine chroniclers called him warlike and energetic. He joined the Muslims in the Emirate of Crete and served under the Emir as the commander of a large naval fleet. He raided the Byzantine shores in the Aegean Sea and made his way through the Dardanelles and into the Marmara Sea. It was the first time the Muslims had ever made it that close to Constantinople in over a hundred years. But Photios was soon defeated at the Battle of Cardia in 873 when the Byzantines used a weapon known as Greek fire, mounting flamethrowers to the front of their ships and burning the Muslims alive. To this day, no one knows exactly for sure what Greek fire was made of, but it had a devastating effect, and Photios was forced to retreat back out of the Marmara Sea. He landed back in Crete, where he rested and prepared his sailors for another expedition. Soon enough, they were back in the fight, and this time they were attacking western Greece and devastating the Byzantine shores. But the Byzantines had been fooled once, and they would not be fooled again. In a stroke of genius, the Byzantines dragged their ships on foot across the Isthmus of Corinth and set a trap for Photios in the Gulf of Corinth. They managed to take Photios by surprise, destroying his fleet and killing him in the process. Many Muslims were captured and tortured to death. Very few survived. But where Photios fell, two more Byzantine renegades would continue the fight from where he left off. The first was Leo of Tripoli, born in modern-day Turkey near the city of Antalya. At some point in the late 800s, he had been captured by the Muslims in a raid and was sent to Tripoli in Lebanon as a prisoner of war. During his captivity, he began working as a seaman where he became well known for his navigational skills. And at some point during his service, Leo accepted Islam and was given the Arabic name Rashiq al-Wardami. Soon after, he would quickly rise in rank, becoming the commander of a ship, and then an admiral, and finally even the governor of Tripoli. And around the same time, in a similar story, Damien of Tarsus had been captured and taken to work in the government offices of Tarsus in a city in Turkey that had been controlled by the Muslims for the last 250 years. He too eventually accepted Islam and was given the name Damiana al-Tarsusi. Damien continued to rise in rank, getting promotion after promotion, until finally in 896, he was named governor of Tarsus. 
And that's when the stories of these two Byzantine Muslims converged. Both cities of Tripoli and Tarsus were important naval bases for the Muslims, and Leo and Damien worked closely together to coordinate attacks on the Byzantine Empire. In 901, they led a fleet to the Byzantine port city of Demetrius, sacking the city and plundering its loot. Three years later, they followed this up by sailing up the Dardanelles, and once again, the Muslims were headed towards the Byzantine capital city. Constantinople. They were now back in the heart of the Byzantine Empire, where Photios had been defeated some 28 years earlier, and the Muslims did not want to fall for the same mistake again. In the distance, a Byzantine fleet appeared, led by the Admiral Himerios, an intelligent and ambitious admiral. Knowing that they could not defeat him with their fleet, Leo and Damien decided now was not the time to fight him, and so they feigned a retreat. But then, when the coast was clear, they turned around and sailed to the empire's second biggest city, Thessalonica, instead. Leo and Damien surrounded Thessalonica with their fleet in a siege which lasted three days. Finally, after the third day, they managed to break through the walls of the city, freeing over 4,000 Muslim prisoners, capturing more than 60 Byzantine ships, and taking as much plunder and booty as their ships could carry. It was a huge victory for the Muslims, and it plunged the Byzantine economy further into crisis. And when the news of the Muslim victory arrived, the Byzantine Admiral Emerios took it personally and set his sights on the two, looking for revenge. Emerios managed to score his first victory over the Muslims in 906 when he defeated a Muslim fleet, destroying their ships in battle. In 909, he achieved the second victory, burning many Muslim ships before then sailing to the coast of Syria and sacking the city of Latakia. Hemerios then sent his fleet to the island of Cyprus, where the Muslims and the Byzantines had an agreement to jointly rule the island. And considering the two nations were constantly at war with one another, it is often seen as one of the most bizarre agreements in history. Emerios betrayed this agreement, capturing the entirety of Cyprus for the Byzantines and expelling the Muslims from the island. And in one final act of warfare, he began a siege of the Emirate of Crete. Leo and Damien now realized how big of a threat Himerios was, and they knew they would soon have to face him in battle. In 912, news arrived that the Byzantine Empire was ill and dying, and Himerios was forced to lift the siege and head back to Constantinople. And now it was the Muslims' turn to set a trap. Leo and Damien waited for the Byzantines near the island of Chios, just north of Crete. As Himerios passed by, the Muslims sprung their trap in a surprise attack attacking them from all sides. It was a complete and total defeat of Himerios' fleet. Almost every single Byzantine ship was destroyed, and Himerios himself just barely managed to escape. Within a year, Leo and Damien had reversed all of the gains that Himerios had made, including restoring Cyprus to joint Muslim-Byzantine rule. Together, Leo and Damien managed to avenge Photios and restore his legacy, and the three Byzantine renegades left their mark on the Ummah, contributing to the weakening and eventual fall of the Byzantine Empire. This was the story of the three Byzantine men who initially fought against the Muslims, but changed sides and accepted Islam. Like and subscribe for more Muslim Facts. These people might not exactly uh, fight for the invader, but they certainly weren't unhappy uh, when the invader showed up. Indeed, remember that I said that in uh, uh, 655 there was a naval battle? Um, uh, how could the Arabs have sailors if they hadn't seen a year-round river uh, uh, until uh, um, you know, a few years before this battle?